What's going on, everybody? Josh Engelman for AwesomeMode.com, and I am back with my NBA DFS contenders on DraftKings for Tuesday, May 3rd. Now be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you know when everything goes live. Follow me on Twitter, at Josh Engelman. Let me know in the comments section who your favorite plays are, and then go sign up at No House Advantage using the promo code AwesomeO so that you can get yourself $25 on your first deposit. Now, we're rounding out the bottom of my top 10 with Marcus Smart, Al Horford, Jason Tatum, Desmond Bain, and DeAnthony Melton on the outside looking in. Who will be my favorites? My top five plays for today? Time to find out. First up at number five, we've got Brandon Clark, power forward center eligible, 6K, projected for 35. The goal is 35 and a half, and he is in the optimal lineup 44% of the time. I gave Clark 30 minutes. I think that his floor is probably something around 24. He could probably get up to like 34 or 36 in a competitive game if it's breaking correctly for him. 30 feels about right. 1.17 fantasy points per minute, 17% usage, 14 points, nine and a half boards. So he's pretty close to a double double. Two and a half assists and two and a half stocks. He's just going to be out there. But I am a little nervous about Brandon Clark's ability to close. Now, I don't think that he, he lacks ability, but it's possible if the Warriors are going to a Steph. Pool, Clay, let's just say Otto Porter or Andrew Wiggins at the four. It's going to be a lot easier for the Grizzlies to close with Dylan Brooks at the four, perhaps, and then having a Jaron Jackson at the five if he's not in foul trouble. So that's really the only thing stopping me from thinking Brandon Clark has this massive ceiling uh, is just my little slight worry that he doesn't have to close. But that doesn't really matter at 6K in 30 minutes because power forward center eligibility, that gets him to the number five spot. At number four, we've got Steph Curry, someone I don't talk about a lot in contenders videos. He's point guard eligible, 9,100, projected for 50. The goal is 53. He's in the optimal lineup 44% of the time. I gave Steph 37 minutes, which is what we saw in the first one. 1 1.35 fantasy points per minute, 33% usage, almost 30 real points, 29 and a half, six boards, six assists, and a stock and a half. It's a massive pace up spot for Golden State. They gain 3.8 possessions above their average by taking on Memphis. This is about as good as it gets from a pace perspective. And you know Steph wants to let it go. The two-point favorites in Memphis, so that still looks good. It's normally just he doesn't have the biggest variation in his performance. Like, you'll remember Steph going out and dropping 48 and hitting a ton of threes. But they don't generally come as big fantasy games with extra peripherals. Doesn't really matter at 9,100 in a pace-up spot on a two-gamer. At number three, we go to Boston for Time Lord, Robert Williams. Center eligible, 4,900. Projected for 28. The goal is 29. He's in the optimal lineup 46% of the time. I have him in at 26 minutes, but his minutes are the most puzzling thing on this slate. He could play 22. He could play 34. Neither one of those things would surprise me all that much today. The round of 1.1 fantasy point per minute guy. It's the stats that are crazy. Eight points, nine rebounds, two assists, three stocks. He's hitting you from all different kinds of angles, but I think we know this much. If the Celtics were playing optimally, they would probably want Robert Williams in their closing lineup, which means Robert Williams would be playing, let's just say, 32 minutes. If Robert Williams is playing 32 minutes, he's the unquestioned number one play on today's slate at 4,900. He just blows that salary out of the water. He only needs 29 fantasy points to pay it off. Robert Williams just ha basically, if Robert Williams scores 30 fantasy points today, he will be in the optimal lineup, barring any other very specific center quirks. Robert Williams looks fantastic today. Don't sleep on him. Your mileage may vary on this one, but I'm feeling like there's going to be a bounce back here. Jalen Brown in at number two did not look good in game one. Shooting guard, small forward eligible. So you get guard forward and utility as well. 7,700 projected for 44. The goal is 45. He's in the optimal lineup 51% of the time. If Jalen Brown isn't going to play better than he did in game one, it's not really going to matter for this series. The Celtics are just going to lose. 38 minutes for Jalen, 1.16 fantasy points per minute. 30% usage, 25 points, seven boards, four assists, a stock and a half. Now, if you think he is hurt, discount this projection, slide him down the rankings. I can't make that assumption right now. I have to give him his normal rates. I have to give him his normal minutes. And if that's the case, given his position and price, I expect big things out of Jalen Brown. The line is, Boston is a four and a half point favorite, which tends to make me think that Jalen Brown should be okay here. Keep an eye on the line though, but ultimately Jalen Brown in at number two. 
Now, before we get to that number one contender, one last reminder, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you know when everything goes live. Follow me on Twitter at Josh Engelman. Let me know in the comment section who your favorite plays are, and then go sign up at No House Advantage using the promo code AWESOMO. My number one contender for today is Dylan Brooks. He's shooting guard, small forward eligible, 5,500, projected for 33. The goal is 32 and a half. He's in the optimal lineup 53% of the time. Now you get that guard forward utility bonus for Dylan Brooks. The price works. He and Desmond Bain were not very good in game one, but I'm expecting a bit of a rebound here, and especially at a $5,500 price tag. If Dylan Brooks scores 35 fantasy points today, he is in the optimal lineup. This is a guy that's going to have, I don't know, 27% usage, 20 real points, 34 minutes, which could be more, but I think I'm being pessimistic there. That's two less than Bain. He's close to a fantasy point per minute, four boards, three assists, a stock and a half. This is a position and price thing. If you want to play other guys, that's fine. If you want to discount Dylan Brooks, that's fine. But to get a shooting guard slash small forward guy at 5,500, that's certainly playing north of 30 minutes in a competitive basketball game that is willing to shoot the way Dylan Brooks shoots. This one is easy to me. I want to have a lot of Dylan Brooks because I think his variance in his output is enough to win you tournaments regularly, and I don't think the public's going to be with me as much here. So Dylan Brooks is your number one contender for today. Alrighty, folks, that will do it. Those are my NBA DFS contenders on DraftKings for Tuesday, May 3rd. There's a FanDuel version around here somewhere, so check that out. Good luck tonight, everybody. Win some money. We are back again tomorrow morning for another edition of The Contenders.